This pack only weighs 18 pounds and has everything that I need for an overnight winter camping trip in the remote Canadian Rockies, including all my food, water, and even a camp chair. I wanna see if it's possible to stay warm, safe, and comfortable while winter camping and still keep your pack ultralight. I tried ultralight winter camping last winter, but the trip I went on did not go as planned. I ended up being very cold and shivering throughout the entire night. That was a pretty miserable sleep. And a big reason for that was that I was trying to use three season gear for winter camping. But this year, I'm bringing gear that's much better suited to winter conditions, and I should be a lot warmer. The forecast for tonight is calling for minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is very cold, but the gear that I'm bringing should be able to accommodate that no problem, as well as allow me to have a 10 degree buffer. The reasons why you'd want an ultralight pack in the wintertime are very similar to the reasons why you'd want an ultralight pack in the summertime. You're gonna be able to cover a lot more mileage and deal with elevation, gain, and loss a lot Lot easier and not be so as sore at the end of the day as well if you are using snowshoes or skis you're not going to sink as deep into the snow and that's going to wear you out a lot less but there are some dangers with going ultralight in the winter time you're likely having to sacrifice either safety comfort or warmth and while on this trip i tried to minimize how much i sacrificed all three of those things i did have to make some sacrifices which we'll get into once we get to camp Whew, this is a tougher hike than i thought it was going to be i had to throw my snowshoes on because it's a lot less tracked than i thought it was going to be as well and the snow is just deep enough that it's really hard on the feet to walk in if you're not wearing snowshoes. Luckily, my snowshoes are also ultralight, so that made carrying them not too big of a deal when I didn't need snowshoes, and now that I am using snowshoes, they're very light on my feet and not fatiguing me very much. Made it to camp, that was a fast hike for wintertime, 13 kilometers in just over three hours. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I had a heavier pack, but like I said, this pack only weighs 18 pounds, and it's time to get camp set up and show you what's in it. The pack that I'm using for this trip is the Gossamer Gear Mariposa. It's a very lightweight pack at under a kilogram, but has a full frame and then hip belt. So it carries weight very well. But the big reason I went with this pack is because of its carrying capacity. It has a lot of volume to it. And in the winter time, your gear is a lot bulkier, like your sleep system, your clothing, even your tent's a lot bulkier and you need that extra capacity. My tent of choice for an ultralight winter trip like this is the Hyperlight Mountain Gear Ultimate 4. It's a super roomy tent. You could easily fit four people in here no problem so for one person it's very roomy the reason why it's so lightweight is because it's made with dyneema composite fabric which is a very lightweight fabric but also very durable and then you use your trekking poles to set it up so with two straps right here connecting the trekking poles together you get your center pole going up the middle and at first i thought a system like this wasn't going to be very structurally stable but i've had this tent out in some pretty good winds i've shaken the tent a lot and it doesn't seem to have any problems with the trekking pole setup the tent that i used last year for my winter ultralight trip was not meant for winter conditions whereas a pyramid tent like this is the go-to for a lot of winter campers because it sheds wind and snow very well Let's start unloading the pack, seeing what we got inside of here. I have my big warm puffy jacket. This is the Decathlon Trek 900. This jacket is super warm. Definitely gonna need this as the sun drops and it starts cooling off a lot. And then in one of the side pouches, I have my water. This is an insulated sleeve that holds a regular one liter Nalgene. And then I have an HDPE Nalgene bottle here. The HDP is gonna hold hot liquids. So if you're melting snow, that water is gonna be really hot, but the Nalgene can handle it no problem. And the HDP Nalgenes are a little bit lighter as well. On the other side, I have the chair that I mentioned. This is the Helidox ground chair. What I like about this is it's a little bit lower to the ground and has a very stable base. So if you're setting it up on snow, it's gonna be nice and stable. And then because it's lower, it's gonna fit inside of a tent really nicely. During the winter, the nights are very long. It's gonna be dark by five o'clock easy. So it's nice to be able to sit down in a chair, maybe read a book and just hang out. I have some electronics on my right side pocket here, an extra battery bank. So batteries drain a little bit quicker in the winter time. So it's really important to have an extra battery bank. And then I have my InReach Messenger. The InReach Messenger has a little bit longer battery life than the InReach Mini 2. And it also has a very good app that's very quick and easy to use. In the top pouch, I have a whole bunch of just random items. I have my keys, my wallet, then I have a headlamp. So this is the Nightcore NU25 version two. So this has a USB-C charging port to it, as well as two LEDs instead of just the one that was on the original Nightcore. 
I'm a little bit on the fence about how much I like this relative to the original Nightcore, but I'm testing it out and seeing how it does. It's gonna operate no problem as a headlamp and I really like that it has USB-C. I have a Bluetooth thermometer, so this connects to my phone and then tracks the temperature throughout the night. This is really nice when I'm testing sleep systems so I can see what the lowest temperature was over the course of the night and whether I was warm or cold throughout the night. Then I have my ditty bag in here. I have some lip chap, my drugs, a toothbrush, and then toothpaste tabs. You guys know that I love toothpaste tabs because you can allocate just how many you need for a trip. As well, they don't freeze like toothpaste does. Then I have my wag bag. Luckily, there's an outhouse here, but if there wasn't, then I'd be pooping into this bag and carrying it out with me so I'm not contaminating the water sources around here. As we get into the main pouch a little bit more here, I have a Nilo Flume pack liner just to protect everything inside here from moisture. This is where I have a lot of really important things like my clothing, which we'll get into into a second here. And then we have my sleeping pad. And then a whole bunch of other stuff associated with my sleep system, like my pillow and then my quilts. I am using quilts on this trip, but I'll share with you guys tomorrow morning what my sleep system is so that I can tell you how it performed in the minus 20 degrees Celsius that we're supposed to see tonight and make sure that it's able to keep me warm enough. My cook system consists of a bunch of titanium products. I have a one liter ever new titanium pot. One liter is kind of the minimum that you need for winter time if you're having to melt snow. If you have anything less, it's gonna take you a very, very long time. Then I have this Hilltop Packs food bag, a bunch of food in here, some cheesies, pink titanium spoon, if you know, you know. And then I have Bushka's Kitchen Food. So this rehydrates in only three minutes, which is nice in the winter time, because in the winter time, it's cold out. And if you have something that takes 10, 15, 20 minutes to rehydrate, like some other meals out there, then during that entire time, your meal's just getting cold. And then I have my stove. So this is a really cool stove made by Fire Maple. It's called the Blade 2. It's, so this is a titanium stove and it's an inverted canister stove, which is very rare. I don't think I've ever seen a titanium inverted stove like this before. So you attach the canister onto this end and then you can run the canister inverted. And the reason why you wanna do that is because when it's very cold out, a lot of that fuel inside the canister is gonna be liquid. So you need to run it inverted in order to get the fuel from the canister to the stove. But if you have just a regular old stove, once the fuel gets here, it's just gonna spurt out as liquid. Whereas the Fire Maple Blade 2 has a preheating tube which heats up that liquid, turns it into gas, and then allows the stove to burn it really cleanly. The temperature is dropping very quickly, so I'm gonna be getting changed in my camp clothes. And I wanna share what the camp clothes I brought are because I did have to make some sacrifices, but I also brought a lot of very warm clothes. Right at the top here, we have a toque and then some insulated mitts. These are very warm synthetic mitts that are puffy, so they pack up really small, but are also very warm. And then I have merino wool long pants and a long sleeve shirt. These ones are new, they're from Outdoor Research. They're a synthetic merino blend. A lot of you have been recommending base layers to be made with polyester merino blend, so I'm really excited to try these out. And then I have some fleece pants and a fleece sweater, super warm and pretty much essential insulation. And then we have these Enlightened Equipment Torrid Puffy Pants. A lot of people forget to insulate their legs when they're going out winter camping but your legs are just as important as your upper body. So a pair of good puffy pants is really nice. I like these ones from Enlightened Equipment because they're made of synthetic materials, so they're gonna do well if you're kneeling and getting them a little bit damp, but they're also very lightweight and warm. I'm switching up my sock system a little bit for this trip. A lot of time on trips, I'll use mid-weight, darn tough merino wool socks as my sock against skin. But for this one, I'm using very thin merino wool socks from darn tough. And then I'm gonna have these fleece socks from Polar Feet over top of that. I was looking at my systems and realized that I hadn't addressed my feet in a really long time, especially that layer right next to the foot. And it just makes sense to use a system similar to my upper body on my feet. I think this system is gonna perform a lot better because the thin merino wool sock is gonna be able to wick moisture away from my foot a lot better and not hold as much moisture against my foot, keeping them cool. And then I have these synthetic booties from Enlightened Equipment. These have been a game changer for me. They keep my feet nice and toasty on winter camping trips, even once it starts getting very, very cold. I also have some other insulation for my head when I'm sleeping. Like I said, I'm gonna be using quilts for this trip because quilts are just a lot lighter than sleeping bags. But because of that, you need some special head insulation, but we'll share that with you tomorrow when we're talking about our sleep system. The big sacrifice I had to make was with my camp footwear. Normally, I'd bring these Mech Expedition booties, which are awesome. They're very warm, very nice to get your feet out of your hiking boots once you get to camp, but they weigh about a pound, so they're very heavy. They're also very bulky. So I'm gonna be having to wear my hiking boots around camp. Luckily, they're very warm, so my feet aren't gonna get cold as the temperature drops, but it would have been nice to have the camp booties. I've talked about the sponsor of today's video, Garage Room Gear. They're awesome customer service, really inexpensive. Expensive US and international shipping as well as their free return 
return policy. But what's really put Garage Row gear on their map has been their ability to be a one-stop shop for ultralight gear for anyone's backpacking or through hiking trips. Most people would think that that ultralight gear is geared mostly to three season use, but they have an awesome selection of winter camping gear, including basically all of the gear that I'm using on this trip, as well as the awesome snowshoes that I showed you. You can check out Garage Row gear and all the awesome gear that I'm using on this trip at the links in the video description. Good morning. Last night was pretty crazy. The wind just continued to escalate to the point where I actually had to abandon my campsite. There wasn't enough snow to effectively use my snow stakes and the ground was too frozen in order to hammer them in. So I kept having stakes pull up and my tent corners flapping in the wind. I tried throwing rocks on them, but it just wasn't a sustainable thing. So I just abandoned that campsite at about three, four in the morning and then came over here and cowboy camped. Temperatures last night didn't quite hit minus 20 degrees Celsius, about minus 17 degrees Celsius. And we'll talk about how my sleep system did in that, especially in light of having to cowboy camp. For my pillow, I used the Trekology 2.0 pillow, and this was one of those items where I made a little bit of a sacrifice. The Trekology is not a warm pillow. Normally during winter conditions, I bring the Hikentra pillow, which has a little bit of foam on top, and that provides a surprising amount of insulation. And because of that, my head was a little bit chilly, not too bad because I was wearing a merino wool toque, I had a buff on, then I had this synthetic hood as well, and with these three items, I stayed quite toasty, but I think if I had the Hikentra pillow, I wouldn't have needed the synthetic hood. And then starting with the ground insulation, on the bottom here I have the Nemo Switchback. This provides a little bit of insulation for my sleep system, but it's also super useful around camp. This is not an item I wanted to sacrifice. I can use it folded up and put on my chair in order to provide some insulation while I'm sitting down. As well, I can lay it out and then use it to get change, which is really nice because I can take off my boots, stand on this, and I'm not going to get all snowy. For my sleeping pad, I'm using the Thermarest Xtherm NXT. This is a version of the Xtherm that's coming out in 2023, and it's a little bit lighter than the older version, which is quite nice when you're trying to do an ultralight trip. I did make a bit of a sacrifice with the sleeping pad. Normally, I'd go with a 25-inch wide sleeping pad. I like that extra width. I find it a lot more comfortable, but in order to save weight, I went with the 20-inch wide sleeping pad. In order to inflate the sleeping pad, I brought this little pump from Flextail. This weighs about the same as the inflation bag that comes with the sleeping pad, so it's kind of a no-brainer because it inflates the sleeping pad really effectively, but it also has a lantern, so you can hang this up in your tent and have a little bit of light throughout the night. And then for my top insulation, I brought quilts. Quilts are gonna be lighter for how warm they are compared to sleeping bags. And with a two quilt layering system, you can get down into very cold temperatures. For the first quilt, I have a down quilt made by Enlightened Equipment. This is the Conundrum. What's really nice about this is that you can use it like a regular quilt. You can use the pad straps and then attach it onto the sleeping pad or it has a zipper that connects the two sides and you can use it like a hoodless sleeping bag. I normally use it in the quilt version, but it's nice to have that sleeping bag option in case I forget my sleeping pad straps or I'm just not able to get a good seal and I'm having drafts come in underneath the quilt. The conundrum that I have here is a zero degree rated quilt and then paired with this Enlightened Equipment Revelation Apex, which is rated to 50 degrees, I can get down to minus 30 or a little bit colder, no problem. While you can use two down quilts in order to layer, having a synthetic layer on top allows your system to deal with moisture a lot better. And because synthetic materials are a little bit heavier, a little bit bulkier, that's why I went with the warmer rated synthetic quilt for the top. What's really nice with the Enlightened Equipment quilts is that you can pick up this layering attachment. So this attaches to your regular pad straps and then it allows you to have two attachment points for quilts. So you can attach your bottom quilt into one of those snaps and then you can attach the top quilt that allows you to lock both quilts onto the sleeping pad. Whether I end up being warm, safe and comfortable while being ultralight is up for debate. I did run into some issues due to the sacrifices I had to make but I brought better tent stakes like MSR Groundhogs in addition to the snow stakes which I usually do on winter trips then I would have been fine with the wind. It also would have been nice to have a wide sleeping pad in addition to my camp booties but if I had added all those items I had sacrificed to my pack it probably would have been two or three pounds heavier. That being said, I would still be very happy with an overnight winter camping pack weight of just over 20 pounds without having to sacrifice anything and being really safe, comfortable, and warm. Go check out this video where I used the conundrum quilt on a trip where halfway through the night, I switched from quilt mode into sleeping bag mode and I talk about whether that made a difference for my warmth throughout the night.